two, one. Jordan Ballard. You, <laughs> you have a podcast. I do have a podcast. Finally, all these years later, finally uh, talking football, left and right as much as I can. Fantasy football, to be exact, but as much football as I can talk. It's uh, it's been a it's been a fun year to say the least. What what was the final like? Screw it, I'm gonna do it moment because. You know, I've been doing this since May. The Zoom thing's been kind of new. At some point, you have that you have that moment where you go, "I'm just going to do this, and and let's just see what happens." Over the last couple of years, the amount of individuals that have reached out and draft help, I literally sit on the phone with people as they are drafting, and so I finally started to put some of those thoughts into one, you know, a concise, whether it be an email or a text message. And, try to get ahead of that. I started doing that last year. And then this year, uh, I really hadn't thought about doing the podcast. That's not something that, you know, it's actually, I would say came out of the COVID, you know, with having to be on, on a damn camera all the time. Yeah. Uh, I was like, Oh, this is, uh, you know, I see you know people trying to do a little bit you know, more with, you know, with, with what they have. Again, we're all bored. Um, it's not like I'm doing anything else on, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday nights. Um, sure. I'm already doing the work uh, to, <laughs> to help everybody out and, to be the guy that can, you know, be the, uh, you know, the subject matter expert or the person people feel comfortable asking questions to. I, I like that. I, you know, whether or not you pay me or not for it, I like, I like being that guy. Yeah. Uh, and so I actually got a call. Um, I had some, some buddies that were starting up a, uh, a blog, uh, shoot your shot sports. And I've known these guys from the Chicago nightlife. You know, when I first moved up here, you know, 10 years ago and uh, another friend of ours, Tyler Dietz was helping him out. And, you know, they started talking about, wanting to get a fantasy football show going and they're like man we don't know anybody we don't know anything about fantasy football and, and so Dean's it's helping like, them with some of well, some of their marketing he's like hey I think you should reach out to Jordan because yeah. he would love that you know he's always been one he, you know he's tried to be famous since he was 10 so you know let's get him in front of the camera and uh it just kind of took off from there we uh I do miss I wish I would have been able to do like a, a pre-season draft special you know draft day manifesto kind of you know, similar to what Matt, you know, Matthew Berry does. And that's a lot of the you know, things I've learned over the years is you know, take a little bit of from, from the best and, you know, create your own thing. But I was able to jump in that week one and there was a lot, you know, because we didn't know anything about who, you know, we didn't have any preseason games, which is usually sure. where I'm, you know, I love the preseason. That's where I learn a lot about the rookies, the, you know, the new running backs and their offenses, the new, you know, uh, the offensive coordinators. Hey, what, you know, what is this team going to look like? Do they have any continuity whatsoever? Um, and, and we didn't have that this year. So coming into week one, a lot of question marks. I mean, we didn't, you know, everybody was high on Cam Akers and, you know, Cam Akers didn't take off till week 14, week 15. And um, everybody, I got him because of you and he did fantastic. And I think I was texting you about that. Unfortunately, yeah. the rest of the team did not step up in either <laughs> league. It was awesome. I, you know, you watch a guy like that and he, he was so smooth and how he moved. I'm like, how was he on the bench all year? But I think he was injured, right? Was something like that? He, he was banged up. Uh, yeah. And with, I mean, that offense, you had Daryl Henderson, who they drafted early last year, who they're, they're still pretty high on. Um, and then Malcolm Brown, who, you know, he gets the job done. You know, he was getting the job done. When you're 15 touches, 120 yards, and two touchdowns, you don't need to yeah, hand the but ball off to the rookie. So he's it, kind of like, is, I feel like Malcolm, Malcolm Brown's like the guy who you put him in your lineup and you're like, I don't know. Could be 15 carries for 45 yards. So Is he really a special saw, talent, though? Acres looks no, like he's like remotely all. special. Yeah, remotely, Remote, right? Acres can be special. And, you know, he comes from, uh, you know, the, the tutelage of, of special running backs, you know, there in Florida State. So the guy can run the ball. You know, he comes from a big, you know, a big conference. Yeah. Um, the I think what we saw this year when it came to people like Cam Akers and, I, you know, my guy, J.K. Dobbins, who – yeah, um, Love that. I'm not afraid to say, hey, come next year, he might be a top five running back. He might be somebody I'm taking in the first round. Um, but what happened this year was these guys t typically get a ton of carries in the preseason. They get to get their timing down. They get to get you know the the offense. You know they need to learn the plays. Uh, and I think the the biggest takeaway I, I heard I can't remember probably it was Tony Romo, but uh, these guys are all their entire career since they were five years old. They've been known to be the guy the, every time they touch the ball, the expectation is they become the guy and it takes guys like that a long time 
to transition into the sport where you got, you know, the Le'Veon Bells on one end of the spectrum who he just, the time, the, the timing of the game is just a part of how he plays. Yeah. And when you got, when you let the block set up, when you know what you're looking for, it's not all about hitting the hole anymore. It's, Hey, wh- what's developing, you know, who, wh- who am I supposed to be looking at first when yeah. I make my decision and I make my cut? Um, because it's that first two yards these guys need once they get those first two yards, then you get to see how special they are. And uh, because it took so long and because guys like, you know, they were in timeshare offenses where you know, they, they have to share carries, it's, um, it's hard for them to get going until this part of the season. Now I am surprised it took Dobbins. I, I was expecting Dobbins again to be out there a little earlier, but I, most of the year I, I would have put him up a running back 20. I mean, most weeks he was in, you know, half point PPR leagues he was breaking double day, you know, he was getting 10 points. So it's, it's guys, guys like that. I'm excited to see those are the kind of guys that you're going to be able to get next year that win your league that are, everybody's a little bit, not as high on now the receivers. I doesn't, I don't know what happened there because this was the, before before we get to receivers, you made a comment a couple minutes ago saying you want to be famous since you were 10. You got, you got to talk about that. Is there a video of you in like, I don't know. I was a ham. I was a ham. I you have uh, always been a ham. I would agree with I, that. Even I, I'm a ham. I like I like being you know uh, the center of attention. I love speaking in public. Uh, I like you know being a leader. I, you know I, it's it's something that I've always uh, it helps uh, drive me, feed me. You know, it's it's being in front of people talking. It gives me this this second level of energy. I think when I really you know what I was really hoping for. You know Jersey Shore came out. I think if uh, if, if if that had come out a little earlier and. You know, I could have maybe got on the road rules, you know, real world. One of these, one of those days, I probably would have tried for that, but it was already too late. I was already in school. So, yeah. I, I got away from my big break. Well, I think you're doing the smarter route with the podcast because it's something <laughs> that you're knowledgeable and you love. I don't think a YouTube clip of you wondering if you got herpes on Tuesday would be as better for your brand as, as what you're doing now. Now, that's not to say you wouldn't have been hilarious and, and probably been a, a great sport on that. I mean, we go back all the way to college. I mean, you've, you've been, I was going to say, I remember, I don't know how much you remember from your pledge dad night we don't, or pledge mom night. We can not get into too much, but uh, you were hamming it up pretty good. You were hamming it up pretty good. I, I was, do what I can. That's, I do what uh, I can. That's my boy, Blue. So let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about, uh, we got some games coming up. You, you were kind of talking about receivers. What would be just a couple takeaways that you have from this past fantasy season? Doesn't have to be like ranked, like top three, but what's just a couple of things that stood out for you? Like, for example, one of the things I think is interesting is, and not just for fantasy wise, but I don't think these off season activities, I don't think they're coming back. And I think that the players union now has, is going to be able to say, Hey, we didn't have these things. Look at how well we played. Like, I don't know about you, but the games were so entertaining this year. And I don't recall that really being like this the last couple of years. Did you feel like that? Well, so I, I would say I was expecting it to be, I was expecting the product to be worse Me too. with no preseason. Yep. Um, and I think what we realize is that we don't need the preseason as much as we thought we did. Yeah. What we do need though, is the, the individuals given the ability to work out all year long. Uh, I think that was the biggest problem was the injuries. Um, and, uh, yeah. And what we really expected, you know, once we started seeing, you know, all the big names go down early and you lose Saquon Barkley week two, you lose Christian McCaffrey week two, that's, that ruins people's fantasy. <laughs> that's their season's done. And unless you uh, got Mike you know, not, Davis and Justin Jefferson yeah, or something like that. Not, yeah. Not to speak on, you know, the actual NFL product itself, but I, I think where the, you know, the common fan will be like, Oh, there was no preseason. Uh, they, you know, that's why all the guys got hurt. It was no, uh, these guys were locked out of the gym as of March 15th. Um, and you know, they were throwing around, you know, water jugs and sandbags in their backyard trying to stay healthy. Um, and we've found out that you can't do that, uh, as an NFL football. I like, player. I like how you talked about like water jugs and sandbags as if there's no ability for these guys to get weights. Like they, there was no chance to find a dumbbell or squat rack it was just they're like hey COVID's here yeah. you can't touch a weight you this is like rocky three now yeah. like christian mccaffrey pick up a bag if that doesn't work 
That stuff's hard though. You ever run around with sandbags? That's really hard. I I've worn the the like the weighted sand vest back yeah. in the day, uh, and it it does it does make it a tad harder than I expected. You played both ways in high school, right? I did play both ways. Yeah, small high school, so we I never came out the field. You know, special teams, offense, defense since uh, like eight ninth game freshman year so i played every single snap since i was a fre- you know, freshman like the eighth game of the season do you think that you look back on that do you think because you played offense and defense it gives you a better ability to to watch a football game and kind of analyze what's going on? so yeah i didn't see that. i wasn't trying to tee that up but just you know my and again my uh, my nickname. So in, in high school, that was, I was big on watching film and that was, that wasn't really a thing in small yeah. town football. Well, you probably uh, had to so, order the VHS from the neighboring town and they had to have a you had store to, had to deliver be, it with a, you know, yeah, you meet with crow. the coaches, you, you wake up right and early on Saturday morning, you meet with the coach uh, of the, the team that you're playing the next week. You ask them for, you know, typically you get asked for two films, um, you can ask for the, the two films you think are going to help you the most. You yeah. can ask for the last two films from the last couple of games. Granted, small town, we know a lot of people. I was able to get my hands on, you know, most four or five, six games that these teams had played. Sure. Um, and I was able to, you know, my nickname, you know, I, my dad has a big printout. It's uh, when you know, we went to the state championship. I was like featured that week and it's Captain Video. And so they love that I was, video. I love, they love that I was uh, all about, reading the game, watching the game, understanding how the game, you know, understanding how the game flow, you know, flowed. Uh, we played a team, you know, when I was, you know, a senior, I, we, I was able to call out every play before the snap um, and, and talking to those kids after, you know, a couple of years down the line, running into them at Eastern, you know, we knew each other, but we, we weren't close friends just being, you know, just, they asked how, how the hell did you do that? And that's just not fun. It's not fun when we got the other team calling out where we're running the ball, where we're throwing the ball. Uh, and I think they had you know, negative 30. I mean, we're talking elite eight game, like a game, like game to go to the final four in the playoffs. Yeah. The 20, I did 22 tackles. And, and so uh, that's, wow. but I've been watching football since, you know, I've had Sun, you know, not Sunday, you know, Sunday ticket, not red zone, but Sunday ticket since 96, 97, whenever it came out, you know, this is, sure. I've always been a fantasy, you know, fantasy football guy. Um, so the amount of football I've watched and I just, I feel like I see things. I can see the game develop a little quicker than others, and you know it helps me understand some of the more you know some of the smaller intangibles that, that go to you know what makes a football team run and what makes them good. You're like Tony Romo in your living room. You're uh, like yeah. they're they're totally calling a draw here, and your wife's like what? And then they're and then all of a sudden it's like she, there it is. She loves it. She's like, uh, I love, she always says, I love when you call the player, you know, you say what they're doing before the announcers do. Uh, and cause that's, I mean, I'm not as advanced. I didn't play college football. I, you know, I don't, I don't know the, you know, the advanced, you know, in a, you know, NFL lingo and all that, but, uh, I have a pretty good idea. And I, you know, I do know that the Dallas Cowboys should have ran some more, uh, third down bootlegs with Dak early in the season. Cause I feel, I feel like, they could have really tore off some more yards. So yeah. uh, it was the things like that where I, I've watched, you know, when you watch a team every snap, you think you know what they should be doing and uh, having, you know, things like the red zone now. And, you know, this year, uh, you know, YouTube, I'm able to go back and watch every single game on YouTube uh, and, and you know, see the plays and get an idea of what uh, – because I can't watch, you know, I, I, you know, I did watch as many games as possible. There was games on Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Pretty much every Wednesdays. day of the week. It yeah. was awesome. It was great. It really and, was. Uh, my, yeah. my wife was such a great sport about it. And uh, yeah, the, kudos but, to her, but being, man. Yeah, Seriously. being able to go back and watch the YouTube videos. Uh, it's a quick, you know, 25, 30 minutes, all the big plays. Gives you an idea of, you know, without having to buy the game pass and stuff like that. Gives sure. you an idea of what you missed. Um, you know, because you can see the numbers. But I want to see how, you know, how the plays progressed. Was it a fluke play? Was you know, is this somebody I you know see have some staying power? Uh, things like that. Guys like Michael Pittman. I, I loved Michael Pittman. I, I love the way he ran runs routes. I think that you know he's going to be a great, you know, great target, great asset there in, in Indianapolis. Surprised he didn't get more love from Philip Rivers, but you know T.Y. Hilton got healthy at the right time. Sure, he got hot, and and so. But I don't see T.Y. Hilton being able to do what he does if Michael Pittman isn't the route runner. And, you know, the guy that they need, you know, D 
deep to let you know T.Y. Hilton play the slot there. We talked a couple of weeks ago, and I remember you mentioned something about I think either next year or now you focus on the coordinators. That's like something I don't remember if it's now or before, but well, so I who, who is I, anyone if you're looking at them now when you're watching all season, like but go into what you're gonna say, but also like has anyone stood out as like you really like what that team's doing from like a newer coordinator standpoint? So I loved, uh, and this was what was tough early on. I loved Kevin Stefanski going to Cleveland. Yeah. Um, but, but what scared me with Chubb is that there was also Kareem Hunt there. Uh, little did I know that, you know, once I saw four games, five games, and again, if I'd had a preseason to see, I'd have been a little higher on, on you know, where I drafted Chubb uh, and probably a little higher where I drafted Hunt. You know, clearly they were able to work well together. Uh, but I wasn't, you know, I knew what he was going to do coming from Minnesota. All he did, you know, he comes from the Norv Turner tree. Norv Turner has ran the ball his entire life. Anywhere, anybody in the Norv Turner tree, you know, it goes back to the early nineties Cowboys. That's, that's Norv Turner yep. all the way through. Um, and so you got, you know, Norv Turner, you got Shanahan. So if you got the Turners or the Shanahan's, anybody in those trees, they're going to be running the ball. So I think, you know, the most impressive was probably Kyle Shanahan out in, out in San Francisco is whoever was the number one running back that week was going to be a number one it was going to be a viable starting option for, for San yep. Francisco. Uh, you just never knew. So more, that's the times I'm a little bit more impressed is when you got, you know, they're pulling guys off the practice squad uh, like Jeff Wilson jr. And he's just fitting yep. right into the mold. Uh, I mean, that's how they found Mostert. That's, you know, that's what made Mostert great. That's, you know, how he broke onto the scene uh, with sliding guys into those kinds of uh, those kind of schemes. But I focus on a little bit more before the season, uh, that's a time when you can, I think, create some, you know, the, the ADP, the average draft position, you can create some more flexibility and you can really gauge, hey, when can I truly take this person or where am I going to lose him? Uh, and sometimes I take people a little, er little early. Um, I was honestly, you know, last year, I was really high on David Montgomery after watching him in the preseason. The David Montgomery I expected to see finally showed up these last six weeks. Yeah. Did you have uh, and so I, you know, I did not have him uh, because I was so mad at, you know, what, what Nagy did to him that first year. Um, and it was like the second Matt Nagy stopped calling plays, David Montgomery becomes who I thought I saw on the film. Um, and so, you know, it might take a while for me to get that, that reassurance that I, I do know what I'm talking about. Um, it's tough, right? When you, when you, I remember a long time ago, I had drafted Edger and James, this is like 2000. It was like a year he tore his ACL. And ever since then, like players like that, when they just like one year, when it just goes bad, I have a really hard time. It's like a girlfriend breaks up with you and then she wants to get coffee and you're like, I don't know. I kind of just, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> I, and then you get I coffee did, anyways. I did not want to draft Derrick Henry this year. I wanted to draft Alvin Kamara really? so, so bad. Wait, who? I wanted, Alvin Kamara. I wanted to draft Kamara oh. so bad. Okay, well, that but was a good pick. My, my strategy, correct. My strategy coming into the year, um, it was actually uh, Derrick Henry, Kamara, Devontae Adams. That was the three guys I was really, you know, I, I liked. Yeah. I didn't love that Kamara, you know, had this foot injury we were kind of starting to hear about. Sure. Um, and, you know, Derrick Henry, he's the most boring fantasy player you can ever have. Um, uh, not if you play against it's, him. It's getting better. It's getting better. And, and yeah. I learned that this year. Um, however, he's still – it's two years in a row. He's crapped the bed in the fantasy championship week. So uh, that's where I didn't, I didn't grab him this year. I, I didn't want to grab him because he cost a lot of people their fantasy championships two years ago because his legs were a little, he was a little banged up going into week 16. Yeah. Same thing happened this week. You know, uh, this year the Green Bay Packers got ahead and he becomes irrelevant. So, sure. uh, but I was going with the safe. I was trying to, to build a team that could score 120 points a week. And, you know, he was, he was the guy I went with. And so it, uh, it worked out. But, but yeah, guys, you know, coming into the year, guys like that, where I see a team that I think is going to maybe throw the ball a little bit more. He was, I was a little scary. Um, and you never know, you know, they have to be ahead for him to be a viable option in that offense. Um, Cause if he's not, if they're playing from behind, he's, he's just, he doesn't, he's not, not, he's not a two way guy. You can't catch the ball. We can catch the ball, but they're not going to put him in those, in those sets. Who, who uh, playing on the Saturday or Sunday is someone that you think you mentioned one name earlier. I don't want to spoil that one, but, and he's not playing either way. Who are some guys, uh, who are some guys that you've seen on film that are playing this weekend that you think 
uh, you think could end up maybe they didn't have a huge role in the regular season, but maybe in the playoffs, this might be their time to kind of have a breakout party. So uh, I, I like the winners. I think, again, people that are going to keep playing well, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, I think those guys are going to keep playing well. Uh, I, I do think the X factor there in Buffalo, though, is Cole Beasley. Guy's uh, been been a stud. He's allowed Diggs to be Diggs. He is a stud. They're, um, uh, let's see, they are the, they're the, okay, they're the noon game on Saturday. Indy at Buffalo. Indy at Buffalo, it's an interesting one. I, yeah. I just don't think, I don't think Indy's able to slow him down. I love, you know, Jonathan Taylor looked great last week, you know, 252 yards. Uh, I, but he's not a name that I see. Oh, I think that they're going to have to score points to keep up with the Bills, and I just I don't think in a shootout Philip Rivers can get that done. You don't uh, think they don't can think... muck it up a little bit and kind of make it like a 23-20 game? I mean, Josh Allen, I don't think he played that well in the playoffs last year. It's like in, Indy's got a defense that can mess people up. It's underrated. I don't know why it's good. Do you know why he it's lost... good? It's simple. It's simple, and it's you play – it's a – uh, do your job defense. There's no flair. Oh yeah. They don't want a lot of blitzes. They have good players in each position doing their job. So they're going to prevent the big play. Who's their they're D coordinator? Make... Do you know? Mm. I'll look it I up. Know. Keep going. I don't Keep know going. off the top of my head. Um, Keep going. Yeah. But they got uh, you know Leonard there in the middle, who's been uh, you know he's a he's a a, a general on the field. Yes, yeah, um, seriously. Uh, to you know talk about teams making good moves in the off season. Uh, you know, you know, adding uh, you know the some some defensive line help, uh, you know, already had had a solid secondary. So, um, I, yeah, I, but I know I don't think that the Colts in Buffalo can keep up with 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 Josh Allen. Josh Allen lost two games this year. Josh Allen lost on a, a hail mary, the last second play, um, and then oh yeah, Arizona the, right. The Chiefs the Chiefs struggled to beat the Bills. So I mean I I think that the Bills those are two legit losses. I, I, Wait, they I went do, fourteen and two. Are you kidding me? I'm pretty sure they. I don't know the exact. I know that I looked back. There might have been another game, but those are the two big losses. Okay. Were on a last second play and a tight game with uh, Patrick Mahomes. So I know the guys. Uh, I know that. I know sorry, the guy can play. Their coordinator, uh, Eberflus. Nate Eberflus. Yeah, he's. Eberf uh, there you go. He was, Eberflus, he was out, Yeah, he was out of. Uh, he comes from. Bill Belichick. It's a it's a Belichick. It was Belichick's defensive line coach when Patricia was the D D coordinator. Are you sure? I think you know. Actually, uh, I don't think so. I think you remember him from the Cowboys. He was with the Cowboys. It says for seven years. Eberflus, with, according to Wikipedia, uh, says so he, he was your he, with linebackers Marinelli. coach and passing game coordinator. Marinelli's guy. Hey, okay, there you go. I don't, know every, well, I don't know everything. There's a couple. Uh, yeah, I, that wasn't a gotcha. I promise you. Yeah. There's a couple of those like coaching trees, like the Belichick coaching tree, the Andy Reid coaching tree. But I got to think Marinelli's probably put quite a few people into places. I mean, he's been around forever. You know what? I don't get why do teams ever get rid of Marinelli? Like why the Bears ever got rid of him? I have no idea. Like, isn't he always like, he always gets results? He's not he's not a sexy defensive coordinator. Um, he's uh, he plays the bend don't break defense, and oh. I think the only the only reason I, I I'm not saying that the Cowboys wanted to get rid of because Marinelli was the D coordinator there in Dallas. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying they wanted to get rid of him, but when you bring in a new head coach, and we already made him keep Kellen Moore on the offensive side, sure. I don't think we're gonna we're gonna allow you know, we're not gonna say no. You have to keep the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator. Again, if anybody did it, it would be Jerry Jones. So I don't know, you know, he could pull that off. Uh, and I don't see, you know, there's not a lot of better jobs out there for a guy like McCarthy, but McCarthy wanted Mike Nolan in the role. Mike Nolan was a complete bust. He's, his, his system's too, too complex. Guys yeah. have to know everybody. You know, there's too much you got to know. Marinelli runs a base defense. Very few mistakes. Ben don't break. Teams have to make, you know, 12, 13 play drives to score. You, you try to get turnovers, but you're not blitzing a lot. And, yeah. you know, it's when you're not blitzing, it's, it is tough to commit turnovers. It's, uh, it's tough to force turnovers. And so you're really trying to get teams to, you know, to go out, you know, turnover on downs. So that was the big, that was why, you know, you know, the defense, you know, Cowboys defense is a little bit better this year. Once, you know, once it turned around, because they were, you know, forcing turnovers again, which is a big thing. 
I hate the bend don't break defense, but when I play ping pong, I essentially, that's what I do. I just try to get it over the net and I try to get you to do something stupid. So I can kind of see where the, where the logic is, but what, what happened to, to your Cowboys this year? I know Dak got hurt, but should we be alarmed by Mike McCarthy and uh, you know, people piling on him pretty good on the interwebs. Will you take that stance? I lost you for one sec. Sorry there. What was the question? Does Mike McCarthy suck? <laughs> um, took me about 20 seconds to get to that, but that's what I meant. Does he suck? I don't know. I, I will say I I thought after week five or six, you know, a couple weeks after the Oleo, you know, the Dak thing and what happened, man, this is a it's an offseason. He didn't have an off, he yeah. didn't have an off season. He didn't have a preseason. He came in, new coordinators, new team, you know, in a weird year. He lost his franchise quarterback right away. Uh, he, you know, he lost his backup quarterback the week after that, you know, on a vicious hit and then had to play guys like Garrett Gilbert, who was uh, the runner up MVP for the American football league uh, or the AFL, whatever the hell they called that thing. And, and Ben DiNucci, who should never ever see the football field ever Oops. again after the, after the, the, the game he played against Philadelphia, uh, the defense couldn't, you know, couldn't stop anything. They brought in a bunch of veterans. Okay, why is that? That defense looked so good on paper. I don't understand it. It's the complexity. It was always just one guy giving up coverage. There was a one step, you know, one breakdown in where somebody was supposed to be. Yeah. And that and the the veterans that they brought in, I mean, they cut Ha Ha Clinton Dix. So I don't know who showed up to camp, but Ha Ha Clinton Dix didn't even play the first game. Um, you know, Gerald McCoy was signed. Don Terry Poe was signed. Everson yeah. Griffin we brought in. And everything I saw was those guys came in out of shape, check, you know, they, they got their money. They didn't care. They didn't have an off season. They were there to just play for the Cowboys, come in week in, week out. And <laughs> so once they, uh, once they got rid of all those guys, once yeah. those guys were out um, and these, the kids got to come in and play hard, Yep. You know, they started to learn what to do. They did make some adjustments because they realized, well, we don't have veterans out there anymore. Sure. Um, we saw, you know, Trevon Diggs, you know, one of the top rookie cornerbacks. Um, you know, he looked great. Uh, a guy I'm really excited, you know, and, and, you know, on the D line, Neville Gallimore, big guy out of Oklahoma. Once he got all the guys in front of him out of the way, you know, you look at the stats, you know, they're not going to jump off the page at you, but you watch him, he's a disruptor. Um, he got guys like Randy Gregory and Alden Smith, they're, you know, theirs. And so uh, if we're able to bring back some of that defensive line, uh, you know, we're young a lot in the secondary, you know, we Donovan Wilson in his second year looked great at safety. I think we might actually have a fix there. You know, I'm glad we didn't go sign Earl Thomas. Uh, if where we're sitting at number 10, Oof, we're looking yeah. at, we're going to get the top corner cornerback in the draft because of all the quarterbacks going early. So uh, I like what I like defense getting these young guys some playing time um getting them a chance to see this system uh but yeah the cowboys you know they were a mess all year uh and there was there's really no no quick fix uh you know the, the offensive line just destroyed uh everybody wants to you know jump on zeke elliott you know and say hey where were you at this year but dude I, when you're the only guy they have to stop they have to prepare to stop it's not that hard uh when you you don't have any of your the offensive line that started week one uh, by week seven, like, hey, uh, it's really hard to to get the job done on a guy, especially the guy that once he gets his two yards, as we discussed, that's yeah. when he gets to show off. Um, you know, when he's not getting those two yards, he does look slow. He doesn't look good, and you know, he had a fumbling problem on top of that. So, it it's a long year. I'm I'm glad it's over. I was excited. Was I got to enjoy year. one game this last week, but uh, hey. We're, I'm excited for next year. I think we got a lot of, a lot of positivity, you know, a lot of positives going in the next. Here's a great, here's a great question for you. It's only great. Cause I think it's great. What year, <laughs> what year, in what year did Earl Thomas and his wife allegedly have a domestic incident involving his brother and other women? What year was that? Do you remember? Uh, 2017. What if I told you that was like seven months ago? <laughs> it's yeah, we the guy's done. I mean, he. he I know, to, but isn't that, what? This is the longest year. Twenty twenty was the longest year of all time. I I 
I, I tell people all the time ago, I can't believe Kobe Bryant died in 2020. I, it feels like Kobe Bryant died in 2013. It's insane. I, it, I like, was, or, yeah. the last like fun thing. Where I were did, you when that happened? By the way, where were you when, when you got the news of what, when Kobe passed, what were you doing? I was in LA, I was in the, um, the JFK airport. So I had to watch people getting off the plane, find out. So I had to see it over and over and over and over again. Oh it was God. awful, awful. I remember sitting at this little, you know, uh, dim sum place at, at JFK having some dumplings and it come on the screen and I'm like, oh, and then it's like, oh, oh, like there's nothing left. Like the crash, like it's, it's there. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that was the worst part having to walk through the airport the, you know, the rest of the day for, you know, for an hour and a half and constantly see people's faces. And I, that was, that was what was the surreal part. And when we got on the plane, we didn't know who all was involved. Uh, the rumor was it was him and his daughter. We didn't know if it was the whole family. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we were really hoping it wasn't the whole family. I think that was going to be, that was going to be awful. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, it, it was, it hit me harder than I was expecting. Um, I made a comment to my wife and I, you know, she thought I was crazy. And I said, Hey, I, I think I took this harder. Um, and again, I know, I don't know. And I, I don't want to ever, I don't want to have to find out, but might've took this one a little harder than like the, if Michael, if something would have happened to Michael Jordan, um, you know, because I had, you know, I have this vision of Michael Jordan from my childhood uh, and he's this awesome basketball player and now he's an owner, but I have you no, accessibility. Really I don't have no accessibility to Michael Jordan. I don't know Michael Jordan, the guy, the person, the human, um, the last five years, the accessibility to Kobe Bryant and what he yep. did for the game and athletes and, you know, just the world in general, knowing what kind of person was being lost was what was the, the what got me, what was the most upsetting. And now you hear the stories, you know, he was starting his own shoe line uh, because he was upset with Nike and, you know, he was getting ready to create really? the Mamba shoe line. You know, he's going to cut ties with Nike, create the Mamba shoe line and, you know, little things, you know, that they just, well, they're going to keep coming out as, as time goes by these discussions people were having with him and, you know, what he was doing with, you know, with his time after basketball. And I think that's, what's the most, you know, that's what, what got me the most was like, dang, are we really lost the, the sport world, the sporting world lost a really, really amazing ambassador to the game that, um, you know, you don't, you don't see guys, you don't see guys like, you know, you don't see it all the time, the mentality, you know, yeah. the Jordan, the Mamba, uh, you know, the Gretzky's, the guys, generational type of athletes that hey they had this it factor um and you hope you get to see it again but you you don't know what about Mahomes do you think Mahomes has it uh, Mahomes has it and and Mahomes is going to be pissed that Aaron Rodgers won the MVP do you think that Rodgers should win the MVP I think Rodgers 100% should be unanimous MVP of the the National Football League this year you, even over Josh, so you're not giving Josh Allen a love. I mean, what the guy had 35 passing, five hey, rushing, I, I, uh, a great, a great season. But what Buffalo, Aaron Rod, what Aaron Rodgers? Hey, the storyline coming into the year was that the Green Bay Packers are drafting Aaron Rodgers' replacement. They're not giving him another receiver. Oh, and guess what? In the second round, hey, we have an All-Pro running back. We're gonna get another. We're gonna draft another running back. They didn't, they have his time there. They've never drafted a wide receiver. In Isn't the that first insane? Round. They've it's never, yeah, absurd. never taken a first. I can't, I couldn't believe that. So as a Bears fan, it made me even more sick that he's been torching us for like 12 years now with no first round picks. Like the only first, I think the first, one well, of the first first round picks he ever got was Tavon Austin this year as a punt returner. Yeah. Tavon the guy that he, I don't even know if he's still on the team. I thought I saw him fumble the other week. <laughs> I think he fumbled against the yeah. Bears. I want to say he fumbled I, last week and, against the Bears. You know, they've they've gotten so lucky. The the first time I saw Devonta Devonta Adams, I think it was his first 100 yard game. I was actually at that game. That's the Des catch game, uh, the the divisional playoff game. Uh, you were Devont, oh, I forgot you were there. Devonte Adams torched us, torched us, and the only reason I was happy about it was because. That was the first one of the first weeks that DraftKings had pushed out the the captain mode, um, and I threw Devonte Adams in my captain mode for whatever reason. Just I, you know, he was cheap, and he you know he won me a, a, a handsome you know bit of money there. But uh, the 
once I after watching him in that game, he was different. Like I'm like, oh, that this guy is somebody that's gonna be the guy here real real soon. Yeah. Now, did I expect him to become what he is now? Where I, you know, he's up there. He's probably uh, if if I'm going if you're 100 healthy and there's no injuries, Julio's number one. But you can never count on Julio all year. Uh, I think Devontae's the guy. I think Devontae's taken over as the, the receiver, the number one receiver in the league. I granted, only because you know, not only, but he's being thrown the ball from Aaron Rodgers. So he, it's he's gonna get the option opportunity to be that. But uh, but yeah, the fact they didn't do anything else, like and and I was really I was hoping that they would uh, have you know went after Will Fuller at the deadline. Um, I think, I think that, they did, but he was having a monster season, and it's kind of good they didn't give up any draft. Yeah, they didn't because he wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. Nope. Um, I still think he's. I still think come you know week two he's in a he's in a Green Bay Packer uniform next year. So uh, that's terrifying. It's, yeah. it's going to be a deadly deadly combo. Let, um, let's talk. Let's talk some gam uh, gambling. So not yeah. that either of us does, or if we did, we obviously pay taxes because we're law abiding citizens. Yep. Are you now, so with the podcast, are you going to transition more? Are you going to talk about the Lions? Because I, I, did, I, I didn't listen to everyone, but I remember it was very fantasy-centric. Are you going to kind of shift now into more gambling? Like, are you looking at the Lions? Do you, or do you use the Lions more as, like, a guideline for fantasy? Like, if a team's favored by, let's say, nine and a half at home, are you like, hey, if I got two receivers, am I maybe going to fade the guy – who is like an underdog thinking they might need to play catch up versus let's say Devante, you know, nine and a half point favorite against the bears where maybe they get up 31 to seven and they just pull them. So I, uh, what we're looking at transition to uh, what, what I want to do, and you know, we're still working out, you know, some of the kinks um, cause I want to keep it going and we want to do it through the playoffs and, yeah. and, and see if there's something that we can uh, model it to for, you know, potentially, you know, you know, basketball and some baseball, uh, so not, you want no, you want to expand out to ev- to like every sport? I would like to. And what Can I you really tell your wife to, that you're now going to be required we, to watch we, every sport we, now. Like golf is going to be far, on, yeah. and you're going to be like, babe, like golf. Yeah, we've not gotten that far. Uh, but uh, live betting the Masters was fun uh, when there was nothing else to do. So, but no, what what I'm picturing, <laughs> right. um, we're not. So the shoot your shot sports, they 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 have a show. They have a a, a bet pro, you know, a bet show that. You know, they, you know, they talk for 10 minutes and give some of the, you know, the upcoming, you know, solid, you know, lines and, 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 you know, bets for the upcoming weekend. The direction I'm going to go, I think is more on the prop because it still is semi fantasy related. Um, It still comes down to the players themselves. And and that's where I've actually, I've tried to learn the most uh, this, you know, this year is, you know, playing the, playing the prop game, uh, my prop parlays. You know what? You know the over under on yards. Uh, and, Why though? Know, whether uh, because it's the closest I have to fantasy, uh, and I don't actually have to beat somebody. I just have to beat my own thoughts to win. And you have to you beat know, yourself. I have to beat myself. I have to you know not get in my own head. And again, you know I've learned a lot of you know with the, the some of the swings that happen here. You know, when you go into you know halftime and you're like, oh yeah, I'm only five yards away yeah. on a couple of people, and then they never you know, touch the ball again. Um, it's been, it's fun. Cause it, it really goes to the, you know, to the end of the game um, where, you know, unless the overs, you know, you hit the over earlier, you know, the unders just, you know, really creeping up, <laughs> creeping up to the over. Uh, and yeah, I think that's, that's yeah. so with all these sites coming out with, you know, different ways you can, uh, you know, you can prop bet players. Uh, my go-to prop bet every Sunday has been Devonte Adams first touchdown. It's hit seven times this year. So I've won seven times on Devontae Adams scoring first, you know, first touchdown. But what was the line? Like oh, plus, early on, you what? know, we're talking plus 400, plus 500. Wow. Um, okay. Two weeks ago, they did a, a, a boost on DraftKings to double, you know, 100% profit boost. So I got him at uh, 1040. Um, you know, that, and, you know, that hit, you know, when you're you plus know, 1040. So, yeah. That's nice. It's, it's tough to not take that bet. Uh, yeah, um, that's real nice. When that's, you know, he's done it time and time again. Um, and so things like, hey, two touchdown games, three touchdown games, you know, early on when Odell played the Cowboys. Uh, Odell hates the Cowboys. Would love to be a Cowboy, isn't a Cowboy. 
So, you know, I took Odell for each touchdown. I took Odell three touchdowns in the game. Um, sure as enough, Odell put up three touchdowns in that game. So uh, it's, you know, that's the, the things I'm trying to work on. But again, you, you kind of touch back on it is, hey, what do I, what do I think this game is going to look like? Yeah. Um, is this going to be, is there going to be two receivers with over 50 yards? Uh, every time, you know, you go with the Rams, you got, hey, 56 and a half, you know, roughly 56 and a half on Cup and, and, and uh, Robert Woods. And you got to pick, all right, who's going to be the guy that gets it this week? Or yeah. is this going to be yeah. the, the two weeks, you know, the one week at, you know, every eight weeks where both these guys put up 100 yards? Um, and so that's, it's just been fun. It's another way to challenge, you know, challenge and, you know, you don't have to put, you know, your ass on the line to, to win a lot of money. Um, you know, when you're putting, you know, doing, you know, four or five different props. And uh, I just think, I think that's where the everyday sports viewer is going to, uh, going to go to. I think, you know, there was a time when we were doing the, you know, the daily fantasy. Uh, I, daily fantasy is trash. You know, I think you and I have had that conversation. I just don't see daily fantasy as being the, have much staying power. I just. Do you know who told me that too? Uh, and this is, this is, I don't remember if this was on, on my podcast or not, but Evan Silva. He said, he goes, those people, they lose just as much as they win. Because I remember I didn't he po- set, yeah, I didn't set one daily lineup all year. Not one. I'd rather yeah, put it, that 10 bucks into four players that I know I feel pretty confident about going into a weekend. You know, well, what's, what's, Dalvin, do you have a couple for this weekend? So this weekend, I haven't dug into too many. Um, you know, I, I do. I can kind of give kind of where I see the game going. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Pick it, pick a game. Let's go uh, anywhere you want to start. Yeah. So I think the one that is going to be, um, well, let's talk about the one that's the most fun. I think the most fun game. Bears, uh, Bears New Orleans? Trubisky you know, on the road playoffs? It's going to be closer than you think. For, Ooh. Wow. The Saints are not an electric offense like they used to be. We okay. don't know if Kamara is playing. Likely he's probably going to be in there. Um, yeah. We don't know though. We don't know how serious the COVID thing. They you know they're really good about keeping that under wraps. Here we are. It's Wednesday sure. and we don't know yet. So uh, again, it could come you know Sunday and he's in. But the Saints aren't this electric team that they used to be. The Bears are playing a little bit better on offense than I would have ever expected. And you still got this wild card of a defense that can make plays. So yeah. I don't think they get rolled. I think they take an L because it's in in New Orleans. But I don't. I think it's a lot closer than people expect. So that game, I want to. I, I was listening to Simmons and do you listen to Bill Simmons' cousin Sal at all? I don't know. They were on. I haven't listened to much this year, but I would, that was gonna be a good laugh. So let's see the line on that game. It's crazy. You can bet DraftKings on ESPN. I didn't even realize that. Where's the line? I want to say it's like eight, it's eight and six. a half. I think it's, it's six, six and a half. I think six it's six and, and a half. half. Wow. I, someone's so here. This is a totally typical like what's gonna happen, right? So someone is going – one of these first three weeks – or first three games, there's going to be an upset. There's going to be – and it's going to be a – I think it's going to be a big one. And it's so it might not be just an outright upset, but someone's going to get crushed financially. Like, for example, like Washington's going to cover versus Tampa Bay. And I don't know why they would. Let's say Chase Young has like a monster game, right? They're at home. Maybe they just get a little momentum. And like Brady squeaks out a victory. So everyone's going to get crushed, right, financially. And then they're going to double down and they're going to double down on Sunday and they're going to look at a couple games. And I wonder if the game they're going to look at is going to be Chicago, New Orleans, because they're going to go, Oh, Trubisky on the road. He sucks. Bears didn't look that great last week against green Bay, New Orleans at home. I bet they roll. And I can see that game being like a, like a six point, six, three, three to six point game. And everyone just gets, fiscally annihilated because of that i could totally see it it's right there. I, I i couldn't agree more um there, i think yeah. on saturday the the riskiest game is probably the rams seattle game uh okay. just because you never know well we know that that russ has a tough time against that rams defense rightfully so number yeah. one defense in in the league aaron but donald I, is I, unbelievable well, you got Aaron Donald on the line and Jalen Ramsey on the backside. Like, come on, you have two yeah. of the best players in football on Seriously. your defense yeah. Yeah. working off each other. And Leonard Floyd had a good season there in, in St. Louis. Um, former, yeah, former Bears Leonard guy Floyd, there. formerly of the uh, Chicago Bears. Um, 
but with the backup there, I said John Walford, uh, you know, for the Rams. Hey, he didn't look bad. Didn't look bad this last weekend. Got it done. Who they play? Uh, uh, so they had Arizona, Arizona with uh, Kyler Murray on though. Kyler Murray on one leg. It's not watch? Russell Wilson again. Yeah, well, did, let me ask you, I, you watch the Rams Seahawks like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, yes, I did. And, Goff didn't and, look good. Goff did not look good. So I don't know how this guy's going to show up and now be good. Now the defense can show up, and and that game could realistically be fifteen to ten, like that. Sure. It's it could be that ugly of a game. Okay. Yeah. Um, um. So that that's one. The one I'm I'm most excited for though is Tennessee Baltimore. Uh, I you okay. know, it's a rematch of last year last year's uh, divisional game where they you know, messed the Titans, up Lamar, didn't they? Well, they messed up Mark Ingram early, um, uh, and so when Ingram was taken out early, that was a different team without. Ingram. Ingram was a stud last year. And so I think yeah. this year the Ravens are a much different offense coming into the playoffs than they were. Uh, yes, they, you know, they came in hot, hot, hot. Uh, but JK Dobbins is a, is a superstar in this league. Uh, Mark Andrews is a top three tight end in this league. You got Marquise Brown finally catching the ball uh, for once. You got nice. guys with speed like Boykin. And then you got Old faithful Des Bryant catching touchdowns again. You um, love Des, don't you? I love Des. I think I loved him when I, you know the Ravens were the only team that tried to sign him after the Cowboys released him, and he turned it down because he thought he was worth more than five six million dollars. Uh, that you know turns out you know came back around once he got healthy. He's a guy that you know he brings some fire, uh, but he knows his place on that team. Uh, and so you know if you need four yards. A slant to to Des Bryant is a pretty sure thing. So I, again, I I think that the the defense of the Ravens is going to have to really come to play to stop stop Derrick Henry. Uh, but I I want to say when I looked, the over was like 40, 54 and a half. Uh, over is going to get the over is going to get crushed. You think over is, I, I think the over is going to get crushed. This is going to look like this is going to look like the Browns Ravens game. Um, fifty four and a half. What'd you just say? I said fifty four and a half. Yeah. I said it's going to look like the Browns and Ravens game, that which was fireworks, awesome. So the you think it's so going, you, you're saying it's going way over? You think it's going way? I over. think it's going way over. I think they're going to okay. score at will. It might be a fun game to watch. What time's that? Okay, that's the early it's game. The noon, I think, early game on Sunday. Baltimore's defense not that good. They've I thought they were, I had them in fantasy. They had a couple really nice so, weeks. They were big, you know, when they were able to score touchdowns, um, you know, they, they got healthy towards the end of the year, but you know, they lost guys like Earl Thomas, you know, in the, yeah. you know, in the secondary and um, yeah, they're a top 10 defense if I, you know, in scoring and yards and all that, but uh, Lamar Jackson's running the ball again. I, I, you know, they're not dinking and dunking anymore there in Baltimore, like they were the first 10 weeks of the season. Um, and so that's where I think, they're going to be able to open it up a little bit more now that Dobbins is touching the ball. You know, he's fresh. Yeah. Um, and again, the defense isn't good enough. Isn't great. Isn't, you know, we're not, we're not talking about the Rams here. So Derrick Henry is going to have some running room. Tannehill is going to have some time to pass. You know, they can, the Titans and soar just as quick as any other team out there right now. So uh, that's, that's the game I'm the most excited about. What about then, least? Yeah, What's the game you're like? I'll think, watch it, but like if my wife, if like I have to like do laundry or if I want to like get a workout in, like I'll do it during the game. I'm I'm afraid that the Steelers Browns game is going to get ugly. In what way? For who? So no Stefanski. So Baker's out there on his own. Um, I know the team knows what to do, but the Steeler defense at home. Ben Roethlisberger, you know, talking today how this is probably his last run. Um, this this uh, gonna, this playoff run, yeah, it's what it sounded like. Wow, not confirmed, but that's you know everybody's got to treat every game like it's the last. Sources one. say via Jordan Ballard, we're gonna get yeah. uh, trending on the internet, and Ballard and so breaks it. I just I don't like Baker's not ready to take the game on that way just yet, and the Steelers defense is too good, and Ben Roethlisberger is still Ben Roethlisberger. And after what we saw, I think that team had a fire lit underneath them in the second half of that Colts game. Yeah. And we've seen a team that realizes they're not a running football team, that they're a passing football team. 
So they're just throwing the ball now. They don't care. Like they, they've accepted that we don't run the ball very well, yeah. but we can pass with the best of them. So you heard that story, right? About how, about what Roethlisberger did in the second half. No, I did not. What did he do in the second half? He, so the Colts pulled a U. So the Colts were calling out their plays in the first half of the game. And apparently there's been beef all season with their uh, Pittsburgh's offensive coordinator, where I guess Pittsburgh Twitter and others on the team have thought this guy's total trash. And so Roethlisberger just like ignored him and called his own plays in the second half. I'm, I'm kid you not. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, and that's been, <laughs> again, they've been in different He's in the teams. league for 20 years, right? Like what, what's he, what uh, are they going to do? Bench him? Where? Yeah, the Bruce Arians making comments about, oh, yeah, Tom Brady kind of goes out there and calls his own plays. Well, no shit, he calls his own plays. The guy knows what he's looking at, and yeah. he knows what he uh, – that's what – I always thought that was the point, to have a quarterback get so good that they can go out there and audible into whatever the hell they want yeah, to beat the, def- to beat the defense. I, I thought that was the point of the game. Now, well, hey, you stick within you're a game You're not a Bears but, fan because that's not, that's not what our system is. Our system is, hey, let's get a guy out there who can throw in the triple coverage. <laughs> the bears, the bears problem is Matt problem. Nagy is that guy that thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. And yeah. he wants to try to outsmart the team. Cause he thinks the other team knows what he's going to do. And instead of doing what he thinks they're going to do, cause that's what they're good at. He's going to try something that they don't, they're never going to see it coming, but yeah. then they're like, Oh, you do this every time Matt Nagy. So we know exactly what you're going to do. And it's just not their not their strength. Never is, never was. Just be what be what you're good at. Have a quarterback that gets outside of the pocket and yeah. throws. Don't try to sit him back there. <laughs> like I, I don't know. I, he doesn't I have watch pocket what he, presence. He doesn't have no sense. He doesn't have that innate sense of like I need to step up and throw it right now. You've seen he's it. He's been he's been better because they're running the ball. That's play action. So he now Montgomery, your guy. He he gets yeah. a step. He, he gets that step on those defensive backs now because they now have to think about <clears throat> the potential that David Montgomery is going to be able to run the ball. So it helps. It helps guys like Baker Mayfield. If the, if the Browns can't run, Baker Mayfield is in for a long day. Now, he just had trouble with the second string last week. Um, they rested some guys. They had, he was playing against Mason Rudolph, uh, and they won, what, 24 to 20? Um, and so like it's yeah i don't like i don't i you know i have a lot of browns fans and i apologize guys but i don't see it ha- i don't think this is the year i i don't uh, you got a bad draw i think you get any other draw you might you have a better chance but going right back to to the steelers team playing for something with that defense i think that's going to be a, a a bummer of a game so you're calling that one's blot by the way uh evan silva bring him back i know you're you you know you're obviously you're gonna you're creating your own fantasy thing he made a comment when he was on the podcast and he said pace think ryan pace the gym of the bears thinks that he can outsmart everyone too and thinks that he can so, see things in people that no one else can and that's why he draft that's one of the reasons he drafted trubisky because he thought he was the smartest guy in the room so it kind of makes sense what you said that pace would hire someone who also thinks they're the smartest person in the room. And that makes total sense why you would have someone who drafts a Trubisky and then, and then hire a coach who puts Cordero Patterson at running back. I mean, uh, like not to, to pile on the bears. And, you no, know, please do. That, that's what I we're here for bad. right now. Pile I on. feel bad for, you know, some of the bears fans, my bears fans, friends, you know, they are very happy that they're in the playoffs. Some are like, why, why, why are we, do, why are we doing another this week of this? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I would love to see the Cowboys play this weekend because I would have loved to. See, I think we would have had a chance against the Bucks. I, I do, but because we can score with them, that's really the only reason. Now it could be a blowout, but uh, the uh, Shaheen, you know, you see some of these guys that Pace drafted yeah. Floyd could never get it done in Chicago. Has you know the year of his life. You know Shaheen, yep. I wouldn't say the year of his life, but Shaheen became a viable starting tight end with the Miami Dolphins backup, you know, rookie quarterback this year. Um, playing opposite of a decent tight end and, you know, who could be great, Mike Jasicki, high on him into the future. But uh, Shaheen actually looked like a football player. He never looked like a football player in Chicago. Uh, Pace was Pace Kevin White, because if he was, I don't, I think Kevin White was the draft right before him. 
No, that was Pace's first draft pick. Okay, so one of the worst draft picks of all time. Tariq Cohen, I get it. I love the idea of Tariq Cohen, but guys, Darren Sproles, he's you know once in a lifetime kind of player. Yeah. I know you drafted him. You know, you know, you you saw the you know the Saints get him that you know or the Eagles wherever the hell he was at when he drafted him. Um, he's he tries to fit this mold of hey, this guy can be what I thought this other guy was. Um, when you just don't have to do that any, you know, take yeah. the best guy, take the best guy because you need you have a lot of holes to fill. Uh, the teams that take the best guys, they're doing all right right now. Maybe we shouldn't have brought up the Bears. <laughs> it's just so freaking frustrating. It's like it's it's Groundhog's Day. Like I can't tell you how many a buddy of mine was texting me, so I, I set up like a friend Zoom call for the Bears game, and a couple people came on. We we essentially talked about everything but the Bears. But uh, and one of the guys like I couldn't do it. He goes, I've seen the same game so many times. And it's like, I, I've seen that same game against Green Bay for like 20 years off and I'm not, that's not even a joke, like 20 years. Like, I remember the NFC Championship game. It was like, you know, Cutler gets hurt. We like, first he overthrows Hester. Hester is wide open for a touchdown. He overthrows him. And then he gets hurt. And then like, this is what the Bears do against the Packers. They like keep it close for a little bit. There's like, they'll occasionally beat him in a down year, right? Like Rodgers will be a little off one year. And like maybe the Green Bay's defense has injuries. They'll beat him. But then the other times they'll like keep it kind of close. It's like, you know, the rivalry, usually the second game of the year, right? Second division game. They know each other. They'll keep it a little close. And then the Bears give you a little bit of hope, a little bit of hope. So last week I'm on Zoom, right? First half. I'm watching the game, talking to my buddies, blah, blah, blah. They're down like 21 to like 12. I'm like, this game's over. So I go to Walmart. I had to pick something up. I come back. It's 21-16. Fourth quarter. We got the ball. We're driving. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I look at my dad. I'm like, we got to do this? He's like, I don't know. I, I, I just – and then the, for that fourth down play comes. And you can just – you see the stupidity instantly. They snap it, and you see, you see the guy running it out. Mitch has never been able to throw an out. He can't throw an out. That's a that's a timing route. That's a precision route. He's never been able to throw that in his whole life. So they said. So you see him overthrow. You know he's not going to catch it. It's a bad throw. It's right on the sidelines. And then afterwards, they show Jimmy Graham. I don't know if Graham ran the wrong route or what. But like, if you would have just ran one of those, like kind of like a hitch, and then boxed out, he probably he probably could have yeah. got the first down. But for some reason, yeah. he ran like a little bit like of a. Do you remember? It was like kind of like a drag. No, you, you had- there's nothing to it. It was just kind of like floating in space. There no dig. He didn't. Have, <laughs> I, I, dude, you're a and I'm like, dude, dude, you, sit back, be, get big, and catch the ball right here. Yeah, yeah. And you knew it. The minute that happened, I was like, we're done. Everyone in my family goes, we're done. And we knew as soon as Green Bay got the ball, they scored. And then you're like, what's? You're like, okay, will Mitch fumble, throw a pick, or will they turn it over on downs? And I want to say he instantly threw a pick. Like it was two. Do you remember? Yeah, it was yeah, like two yeah. plays later. And it was it, right and, away. And he had another one earlier in the game too, where it should have been picked in the end zone. Mitch throws two. He's like color. He throws two to three every game, every game that will be that. It just it's it's. Do they get a finger on it? Are they in the right spot? Because you've seen this. That if they're like new, if New Orleans is in the right spots on Sunday, they will have three or four picks, guaranteed. And they'll get, and I guarantee, I would bet this too. If there's a prop bet out there for people, uh, Trubisky strip sacked. I don't know if you can bet on that, but the odds of Cameron Jordan or someone on the same strip sacking and getting a fumble off Trubisky, I wouldn't even, I would, there's I, lock of the week. I, he's gonna, it's gonna be like third and seven on like new, on like the Bears 30. He's gonna drop back. He can't read a defense. All of a sudden, you're going to see Cameron Jordan coming around. He's not going to feel him, and then boom. And I get, and then all of a sudden, it'll be Saints ball. It'll be a close game, yeah. like you said. It'll be like Bears ten six. They'll be like leading ten six for some reason. Everyone will be like, "What the f?" And sure enough, boom. All right, we shouldn't. Have, I, okay. I was worried. I did. I've <laughs> I've done really well. I've done really well in the Packers this year. The Packers have been yeah. you know, not. You know, they've they've done me you know done me well financially. Uh, and so that was my big. I went pretty heavy on the Packers minus five. And so I, you know, I told you I was on the vacation. Like, yeah, go back to my room and I was like, yeah. God damn, Chicago Bears is 2016 with 11 minutes left. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, what am Five I point game. with the ball? 
like what? what would I do? Like, there's no way. I said, I, I'd have put, I'd have put the mortgage on Green Bay minus five at home for the first, for the to win for the yep. first, you know, first round by needing I would, to win. Know, and it, and it did, it did end up happening. It ended up getting ugly. Yeah, quickly it got ugly fast. Um, no. and like monotonously, not like a big play, just kind of like bang, 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 bang. Oh, there's a touchdown. Oh, we take the ball back. Bang, 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 bang. Another touchdown. Like no big play. So, uh, yeah, I think you know, I don't know what you know what the ultimate goal uh, for this you know from a playoff standpoint, but I think the Packers. I like our number one seeds this year. It's kind of segue. Okay. I like the Packers and the Please Chiefs. Do. I think it's. I think. <laughs> I think it's going to be really yeah. tough yeah. for teams to go to Kansas City and Green Bay and play in January with yeah. minimal fans, uh, cold weather. You know, uh, they're already talking about this next month. You know, the uh, the polar vortex is going to split in two, and you know, the, we're looking at some you know record temperatures across the country. So, like, it's like it's, record low. Yeah. You know, everyone was so happy that 2020 was ending, and we're not going to talk about current events literally have emails that are like, don't talk about it. So I won't, but uh, 2021 kind of starting off. Uh, we got poor vortex coming right now. I mean, we got Dr. Dre is in ICU. That yeah. Was what that. is that? That's terrible. Didn't he have a brain aneurysm? Is that what I heard? Brain aneurysm. Yeah. Brain aneurysm. Crap. So, yeah. I'm not up to date, but I'm about 12 seasons into Grey's Anatomy right now. And they do, they they see a lot of brain aneurysms and some people live and some people don't. Uh, and it's, it's a scary one. Can we talk about, that, hold on, 12 seasons into Grey's Anatomy? Yeah. Is that is that, your, pe- is that your penance for, uh, I get to watch all the football I want, but I, you have to watch Grey's Anatomy with me? Is that how that works? Yeah, it's better than Dawson's Creek. So what do you think about this weekend's games? <laughs> <laughs> I never watched either, so I, I – that's all I want to segue. I just I can't talk yeah. about it. I'm just not fluent in Dawson. No, yeah, no. The Grey's Anatomy is good. I recommend it. It's a solid show. There's no reason on reason got 17 seasons. Yeah, that's true. All right. So this weekend, what do you what do you got? Let's 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 right, quick, so, quick, quick on this weekend, and then we'll give uh, we'll give, give your big picks for this, uh, and then we'll get out of here. All right. So I think the uh, I do think the Colts have trouble with the Bills at home. I see. I think the Bills are going to win that one. Uh, I don't want to say handily, but I just. I don't think the Bills are going to have much trouble advancing on to the next round. Uh, I do pick you know, the click. You got one in that game. You think Dix in that has game? A big I game? think that Josh Allen over. I think he. I think it's right at like two. I think I wrote it down here. Something. Uh, let me see what I said. Josh Allen two ninety seven and a half um, yeah. was was the uh, over under on his yardage. Okay. Dude, he's gonna he's gonna ball out. Yeah, I okay. just I, I I think he's there to make prove a point. You know, I like that team. They got some attitude. Um, Seattle versus the Rams. Again, I think Russ takes the victory there only because Jared Goff's not there. If Jared Goff's there, I think that's the ugliest game of the weekend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think it still could be. Uh, but the kicker there is, is going to be Russ. Uh, the guy can still, you know, get it done. Uh, one of these days, DK Metcalf is going to beat Jalen Ramsey in a game. Um, I don't know if it's this weekend or yeah. next year, but one of these days, DK Metcalf is going to have one of those Jerry Rice, Deion Sanders, you know, on Deion Sanders kind of games, or Michael Irvin on Deion Sanders. I don't remember all those matchups from back in the day, but they're all they're good for one. And you know, maybe he gets that one, but I think that's an ugly one. I do think the uh, the Seahawks pull that one off. Um, and then the football team, you know, they're in Washington against Tampa Bay. Uh, the one, you know, I don't know. I I think that Tampa Bay they're putting, you know, they're lighting up the scoreboard. Washington's got a pretty solid defensive line. I just don't think Alex Smith, Terry McLaurin, and Antonio Gibson can can score with Tom Brady, um, especially the level he's playing right now. And he's got a pretty good defense. That's a solid yeah. defense there in in, in Tampa. Uh, and even if Mike Evans is out, I, I honestly, you know, the, the Antonio Brown What's signing deal? is looking genius. So no structural damage. Um, good. But they're not certain he can play this week. Uh, and so, you know, that, that's going to be my, you know, in that game, I think Antonio Brown stays hot. Like, I, you know, Antonio Brown's starting to get hot at the right time of the year. Okay. He's a guy I like going to the, you know, this, you know, this, this playoff run. Uh, if Tom needs to go to him and Antonio Brown are starting to find, you know, find a rhythm. They are like, 
what is that? I like uh, it's it's the weird uh, yeah. it's the weirdest thing. Um, I compare it to, you know, Tom doesn't care what anybody thinks. Um, you know, if if you know everybody, you know, everybody's got that one friend that can get them into the club, whether or not they like hanging out with them or not. Yeah. Um, Antonio Brown's that guy for you know from a I football standpoint. Yeah. He can play. The guy can yeah. play. Like he's he's yeah. a stud. Um, yeah. when he turns it on, he can play. So it's uh that's they have this relationship. There's a respect there. You know, Tom can tell him what to do. Uh, yeah. I can tell him to take his TB12 vitamins or whatever the hell he's got him doing. But there hasn't seemed to be too many issues. You know, Gronk's playing well. Uh, Evans has been yeah. playing lights out. They still got Godwin. But if 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 Evans misses time, I, I honestly don't think that they're going to miss much uh, with how well Antonio Brown's been playing the last handful of weeks. Could you see – I know you said you like the one seeds. I think Tampa's the one team where I could kind of see them getting on a run here because it's they Tom beat Brady, the, man. They beat it's Green Tom Bay Brady. up. I watched a lot of that game. I will say it's partially I thought it was you know those games sometimes they just get away from teams real fast and you know it's like 24-7. Yeah. Oh. That was one of those games, but like Tampa kind of owned Green Bay in that game. Tampa's got the better D. Uh yeah. and but but Green Bay, you know, right now that Green Bay offense is great. The one thing, you know, if I don't, I've said this, I don't know if I've ever said this to you, but if that game was anywhere, you know, south of, you know, Tennessee, Leonard Fournette could take over the game. Leonard Fournette can't run in, when the temperature goes below 40 degrees, never has been able to. I can so see until that. he proves me wrong, when Tampa, if now if Leonard Fournette was playing on the top of his game and Tampa goes up to Green Bay and it becomes a Leonard Fournette game, I like Tampa's chances. What about Ronald uh, Jones? Isn't he? Isn't he back? I like Ronald Jones too, but uh, it was he had a broken finger. Broken oh. fingers, what? Did, uh, and he got COVID. They all have it at the same time, but uh, but Fournette's the same kind incident. of guy you, yeah. Say, Fournette's the kind of guy you want the size you want to lean on um, at this time of the year, which is why you know we'll talk about the other guy I'm high on. But if anybody's going to take down Green Bay, it, it is 100 percent Tampa. Uh, the Saints, they don't have enough firepower, um, and we know that they can't play outside the Dome in January. And they're going to go up to Green Bay. They're going to freeze. Uh, there's no way you – know, Drew Brees' ribs are going to hurt so damn bad in that, you know, yep. that five-degree temperature. First time he gets crushed, uh, it's not going to be – And the Packers are built for it. And it's, yep. This is a great year for them to have that, that one seed. Um, but, yeah, I, I think the only team that can score with them is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady. Um, I just, I've seen two sides, you know, the Dr. Jekyll, you know, Mr. Hyde of the, the Bucks. You don't know who you're going to get. Um, and I, again, I just don't love them going to Green Bay in January. Uh, I know it's Tom and he'll be fine. Eh, and, he's had moments. But, he's had senior, he's had, I mean, he, he's, he's, too, the fact, by the way, that he's not even getting MVP consideration. He's 43. No one's ever had a season like him at 43. It's insane. He it's literally he bagged. It's insane. He bagged another one point two five mil, I think, for top five in passing and top five in touchdowns, on a, you know from a bonus standpoint. This was 43. one of his best. It's one of his best statistical years. Forty three. One of his one of his best. Um, no off so, season with no off season with this team. No off season. Nope. Forty three. Which is which is what's scary right now is he's finally they're they're getting a group. Yeah, so, they really are. They can play again. I just Green Bay in Green Bay in December in January is tough to tough to you know tough to I overturn. Get, I got you off track again. All right, so where are the other games? So ball, you got Buffalo. so we got so then Sunday Sunday. Tennessee Wait, did you go through, hold on? Uh, Rams. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you okay? So Tampa Bay, you have Tampa Bay win. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. No worries. And then so you know Sunday we got Tennessee and Baltimore. I will have my popcorn ready for that game. Okay. I do think that the Baltimore pulls pulls that one off. Um, okay. I think Lamar Jackson's playing really good football right now. You know, they've been a different team after that Cowboys game, then they got you know, the other Browns game. It's they're playing they're playing really well. He's he's running at the right time. He's throwing at the right time. Defense is getting a little healthier. I do expect it to be. You know, there might be 500 rushing yards in that game. It, it it's it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. It's going to be some old school football. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the Lamar Jackson and J.K. Dobbins um, uh, are going to be special. So, all right, I 
There's New Orleans. I think we said New Orleans. We talk, it's close. New Orleans, yeah. but it's going to be a close one. Uh, and then, yeah, Saturday's right. games are Saturday's games are a lot more fun than Sunday's games, um, you know, as a whole. I, the, I, I think Pittsburgh and Cleveland is going to be kind of a dud. I just do. All right. Who, okay. So I mean, a couple of questions, get you out of here. And then after sign off, stay for a minute. Who makes the biggest run at the one seeds? Each conference, go. Quick hitters. Uh, the Bills and the Bucks. The Bills are the only team that can beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Why? Uh, because they can score with them, I think, is the main, you know, because they have Josh yeah. Allen. I, I think that that is the only reason. Um, and it doesn't matter where they're playing. You know, they already, they're in Buffalo. Uh, they have the attitude. And I don't, they're the only team that can usurp, up, usurp, the Kansas City Chiefs right now. I don't think anybody does. I do think the Chiefs go back to back, um, but I think the Bills are the only team that can beat the Chiefs. Why Tampa Bay? Or did you say already? Because they can. Oh, am I getting? Oh, I'm sensing a theme. Teams that can score a lot of points can hang with other teams that can score a lot of points. score a lot of points. That kind of. That's that's the that's the theme. Yeah. And the Steelers. Yeah, while their defense the Steelers, is, is right? excellent, while the Steelers Maybe. have an excellent defense, um, they've not proven to be they still give up points it's not we're not talking yeah. like a you know an 01 ran a ravens defense you know we're not talking you know th these aren't like world beaters they got great guys on the defensive line they, you know they can you know cause some uh you know they can cause some issues you know for an offense but they're not holding the chiefs to 10 points in kansas city there's not not non-football related question what's one lesson you've learned this year from being having your own podcast one lesson I've learned preparation from, you know, in the podcast world, I, you know, there's a couple episodes I did. I didn't prepare as much. I wasn't as excited. I wasn't as amped. There wasn't a lot going on. Uh, and I could tell with my energy, emotion, you know, being a dud on camera, which was, that was at the end of the day, I don't want to be a dud on camera. And it was crazy that even just prepared, a little bit of preparation and giving myself some talking points and getting excited about a couple of things just made the whole thing, even if I didn't like what I was talking about, <laughs> made it, made it go by a lot. You know, it was a lot more fun. And I thought yeah. I you know, brought, you know, held a lot more ground, whether, you know, it's like, Oh, I could listen to this guy, even if he's talking about boring stuff. Uh, uh, Silva at this point, I know I keep bringing it back to him, but he would said uh, he did some radio for a while and Ross Tucker said, you need energy. Like you sound boring. So if you listen to him talk now, he like comes in really high energy. And he said that like, it's, he had to like practice it. So yeah. I mean, would you ever want, I mean, you've listened to podcasts and, and you've listened to people and when they're just kind of like going through it, you're just like, you like, you either like zone out or you're like, why I, am I listening to this? Right. You're I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a stats guy. I want to be uh, I want to bring some of the, you know, the outside stuff, like, the little things like the coordinator stuff. I want to bring the, the stuff like Odell Beckham hating the Cowboys. That's the kind of things I like to bring yeah. to the game. Um, that's what gets me excited. That's the things that I can pick up on that a data program can't. A data program is not going to be like, oh, Odell Beckham hates the Cowboys. Sure. So that's the thing. You know, that's where the human can still have some interaction. Um, but I would agree. I, I, I'm a very animated individual. And it's just how I would talk in my day to day if you and I were sitting across, you know, you know, at a kitchen table. So it's the same person I try to put on camera. Final question. Who, who's the breakout? Who do you think will break out this playoffs that hasn't gotten as much usage? And I think we talked about that earlier, but it was off. We, wasn't being recorded. Right. Who you got? AJ Dillon running back for the green Bay Packers. I finally understand why they drafted him in the second round. Aside from the, you know, they're losing Jamal Williams at the end of the year. Yeah, they're losing Aaron Jones at the end of the year. Um, but I saw what he was able to do in that game against the Titans in the, the snow, like mud, snow. Uh, and he was a difference maker. He was, I wa went back and watched every run multiple times. And he, he's going to be a difference maker in January uh, when it comes down to, you know, moving the football up there on that frozen tundra. Um, and, you know, what we've seen, Every time we have a Florida Super Bowl, is it's a goddamn swamp. So down in Tampa Bay, it's going to be more likely that there's you know we're dealing with some some weather than you know than not. So um, I do think uh, my guy, if I were to say 
I want to put my hat on one guy coming into the postseason, you know, the Michael Garrett Blount award, you know, if you all those years of the Garrett Blount would just go crazy in the playoffs. I think yep. it's AJ Dillon. Um, three weeks ago, it probably would have been Fournette because I, I think that uh, he was given an opportunity, but I think Dylan, uh, after seeing what he could do, uh, again, you know, from a fantasy standpoint, you know, is he somebody I'm putting a bunch of money on? Uh, but when we could see him become a very important asset in a, in a tough game, if it starts snowing. Who wins the Super Bowl? I think the Chiefs go back to back. I don't even think we've seen a quarter. A th- I don't even think we've seen a third of that offense. I, 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 there's just all those guys have played together too long. Uh, you yeah. got Kelsey. Kelsey was the second or third, second leading receiver in football as a tight end. Uh, Tyreek Hill happens is also on that team. Sammy Watkins, Nicole Hardman, it's terrifying. Yeah. Le'Veon Bell. Um, and the defense is good enough. They, they, the defense just has to be good enough to slow them down. Um, yeah. And I'll be honest, I, we've watched all those years, you know, we watched the Blackhawks, um, you know, win, you know, win cups. And you saw the team in the regular season by the end of that run or midway through that run. And they don't really have any fun. It's not fun. They, the fun time is in the playoffs. Yeah. And I, I just, there's not a team out there that can, that can play with Patrick Mahomes and, and the Chiefs right now. I just don't, I, yeah. I don't see it. I do think it's going to be Green Bay, Kansas City, uh, but uh, Pat Patrick Mahomes will carve up that Green Bay defense. So I, it's. Yeah. I think you're right. There was a, I don't know if you remember. Did you watch the Chiefs Tampa Bay? Chiefs Tampa Bay. Uh, it was probably. a couple of weeks ago. I I think Kansas City kind of let it loose a little bit in that game. That oh, was one oh, of, I do it. Yep. When Tyreek had like 250 in the first uh, first half, I, I think you're right. That team, like we've only seen like glimpses of like them having to even try. So if they if they like have to put the pedal down, good luck. <laughs> what do you do? I don't know. What, what do you do? How do you stop that team? Unless unless you have the best pass rush and you can always get them a homes. I have no. And even if let's say you get close, he's he fast. Yeah, he's fast. And they added Le'Veon Bell, who's now had six weeks of, of work. Uh, yeah. Their number four option is Sammy Watkins. Who, not a bum. Not a bum. Not a who, bum. Who was awesome in the playoffs last year. So, I, I just, I don't see anybody beating the Chiefs again. Uh, they're, they, they're scary for a while. <laughs> they're scary for a while. I just... Oh, you never, you never know though. Like st- weird stuff happens. Like look at, uh, look at Golden State Warriors. They looked like they Chicago were going to about Chicago Cubs. They looked like they were going to rip off a couple. Yeah, and here, I don't, even, I don't even recognize this team. So Chiefs fans, if you're out there, enjoy it. Better enjoy it. All right, Jordan. What uh, people are going to really enjoy this? Where can they find more of you? So uh, I'm on YouTube, guys. Uh, YouTube, Facebook. I'm on Instagram myself, you know, please, you know, uh, you know, underscore Jay Baller if you want to follow me. Uh, I'm with Shoot Your Shot Sports. Uh, we are a growing, uh, what I would call lifestyle blog. We do some sports. We do some gambling. Uh, we've got a couple cool, uh, uh, really good affiliations coming up that we're going to be announcing uh, with Points Bet. Uh, we're going to be doing some really sweet rollouts with those guys, um, some really awesome promotions. Uh, we're going to be integrated into their site uh, with, you know, you're going to be able to bet with us. Uh, and so uh, we're growing. We've been uh, going about a year now um, and, you know, finally starting to, to add some individuals, uh, putting together a studio. So uh, a lot of big things for us here in, in 2021. Uh, and then for me, you know, I'll, uh, you know, I'll be here hanging out. Football season's almost over and I got to, you know, I got to learn about, you know, now I got to teach myself some basketball. It's been a while. Uh, if the team that puts more in the hoop than the other one, uh, that's how they win. So that's, uh, it's kind of like football where if you can what i've learned is the sixth man makes like 20 million dollars a year oh my god god dang it's that's absurd yeah the nba really was i mean you and i just didn't get the uh the height you might have had the athleticism i didn't have the Mm. height or athleticism Ah. to do it but making 20 million bucks a year for playing about 30 minutes a game not a bad gig all right buddy thank you for coming on it's been a pleasure appreciate it and uh, we will. Uh, what's your YouTube channel? I don't have a YouTube channel yet. So, be, what, what, what's is it? Shoot, shoot your shot on YouTube. Shoot your shot. Yeah, shoot your shot. Sports.
All right, go to Shoot Your Shot Sports on YouTube after checking out this video. All right, bye. Talk to you later. See ya.